And the first thing you need to do before working on your motor is set up your working environment. Outboard motors have a lot of small parts that need careful laying out and you don't want to lose any. I recommend you have a roll of disposable paper. You could use some paint brushes and a pot of petrol. And toothbrushes are particularly useful for cleaning small parts. Borrow your wife's favourite turkey dish. That's great for catching oil. Do bear in mind that with oil, you need to make sure that it's deposited at your local tip. They usually have a facility for taking old oil, and we don't want to throw it into the bushes. And of course you'll need a kettle. It's thirsty work, this outboard business. Now I'd like to show you some of the tools that you'll find very useful when you come to service your outboard. You'll need a reasonable socket set. I recommend that you buy quarter or three-eighth inch drive sockets. If you go for a half inch drive set, which is normally used on cars, they're a little bit unwieldy and clumsy for outboard motors. A quarter inch set like this is very useful. It enables you to get into very small places. And most of the fastenings being small on an outboard, that's really the best type to use. You'll need a set of spanners. Some American motors use both metric and imperial sizes. So you can get caught out if you just keep one type. Allen keys can be useful to have, although not many outboard motors use this type of fastener anymore. Becoming increasingly more common are the star-shaped sockets. It's good to have a set of these. Obviously screwdrivers, you'll need both flat screwdrivers and Phillips. An awful lot of fasteners use Phillips sockets these days and that's a useful type of screwdriver to have, especially if you've got a means on the shaft of exerting pressure with the spanner. An impact wrench can be a very useful tool. This will help you undo very tight nuts and bolts. A set of feeler gauges is a must, especially if you're servicing four strokes. These are needed to set the tackle clearances. One of the most important tools of all is a workshop manual. Whatever outboard motor you've got, you really ought to get this first before you start working on it. There's a lot of data in these that can save you a lot of grief. It will show you how to do all the main jobs in your motor. And with reference to this, you'll do quite a professional job. If you think you're going to need to remove your flywheel, there are three main kinds of flywheel holder. There's the Yamaha type here. Those little pins sit in holes on top of the flywheel to hold it steady. There's a type here which is used for toothed flywheels. If you have an electric start motor, that locks into the teeth and holds it steady for you. But if you have a smooth flywheel, you'll need an old strap type like this. Most smaller motors need this one. A flywheel extractor looks like this. There is no other way of removing a flywheel, unless you've got a British Seagull, which has its own special technique needed. For all other motors, this applies, with the exception of Mercury's. They use their own special socket, which goes into the top of the flywheel. I recommend you get some pin punches and a centre punch. Very useful tools when you're undoing things or if you need to drive a shaft out. Also very important are taps and dies. That's a tap holder. That's a tap. These are used for cutting threads. And any outboard service, these really are a must. These are easily available from hardware stores. And really any motor with an aluminium casting, which most outboards have, this is, becomes very necessary to make sure your threads are kept in good condition. If you want to recut the threads on a stud or a bolt, you can buy dies. Again, these are all available from hardware stores. Now, some outboard motors are used in pretty filthy conditions, especially in estuaries or near sewage outfalls. So treat yourself to a little pack of latex gloves. Some of the things that can find their way into outboard legs you really don't want to touch with your skin. So a pair of these on, and you'll save yourself giving yourself a bug. 
power trim systems on outboard motors need filling occasionally, and the easiest way to do it is by means of a syringe. If you go to your local veterinary surgeon, he'll sell you one of these, or a box of them. They're very cheap, and they enable you to get oil into small places that is almost impossible otherwise. The device that we use a great deal in the workshop is the engineer's stone. This is used by placing some wet and dry paper on top, picking up an item that needs refacing, and then with a figure of eight motion, we'll work this until the surface is perfectly flat. The only problem with the engineer's stone is they are very, very expensive. So the alternative is a mirror. If you lay some wet and dry paper on that, that will give you the same effect. You'll need a grease gun, loaded with multi-purpose grease. You can use this on all the grease nipples on your outboard. If your budget allows you to run to this, I strongly recommend you acquire a compression tester. This enables you to determine whether you've got a problem with the piston rings or the bores of your motor. And the second tool is the gearbox pressure tester. That will tell you whether your gearbox is leaking oil, and that can save you a bomb. That's well worth acquiring. You'll need a reasonable set of pliers from side cutters. A Stanley knife can be very useful. And a reasonable collection of hammers. This type of hammer has a soft rubber end and a nylon end. And as you can see, this one's well used. A reasonable mallet with a block of wood is also a wonderful knocking st uh, stick. Remember to use the wood because most outboards are made of aluminium. And if you hit it directly with this tool, you'll start to shatter things. Finally, unless you've got very, very good grip on things, treat yourself to a pair of grabbers for when you drop those nuts and bolts down into the lower cowling. Now here's another very useful device, a compressor. This can be used to blow out all sorts of things. You can use it to get rid of the debris that collects in the lower pan of your outboard, muck that collects in the carburetors, and debris that tends to form underneath the water pump. However, it's quite an expensive little item, so if you go to your local computer shop, treat yourself to a can of spray duster. It does much the same job, and of course at a fraction of the price. It's also great for table football. Well, that's all the tools you're going to need to do the outboard. Let's have a look at the machine itself. 